how y'all are. This is your boy George Jones down at the Burton Gun Range on this latest installment of, hey, I got this old used dog. <laughs> little shout out to uh, George Jones there. How y'all are this afternoon? This is your old buddy George Jones over here at the Bergen Gun Range, a big mouth full of dip. I thought I'd just go ahead and talk anyway. Uh, this is our next installment on, hey, I got this old used gun. He's the man. But we're here looking at, actually, quite a modern gun. But that's not really what this video is about. We're going to be shooting some of these Super Calibris. Uh, made by Ag Aguila or Ag Aguila I, I don't really think anybody knows how to pronounce the name correctly uh, supposedly it's a very quiet um, 22 long rifle and one of the reasons why I brought that old Otis over there uh, he's a I just picked him up about a month ago but he's uh, he's nine years old um, you know I got him from a shelter and I don't know how he is around firearms. So far, he doesn't seem to be too bad. But I figured some uh, very quiet 22s would be a good way to introduce him into the world of firearms. So we'll see how he does. I'm going to try and keep an eye on him. But yeah, I just want to test out some of these out of this Savage. Uh, this is the Mark II S. Jeez, what is it? I think it's like the SV or FVS. Oh, I forgot. I don't know. I'll notate what it is. It doesn't actually say what it is here. It just says Savage Mark II. Is it FVSR? Anyways, um, it's a 16 inch 22 long rifle bolt action, which I think will be perfect for testing out these uh, Aguilas right here, these Super Calibris. Uh, Calibri, I guess, means hummingbird, so it's got a little picture of a hummingbird on the box. Do a quick close-up here. By the way, I do kind of have an old gun. I got a uh, Makarov right here. So, not exactly, uh, you know, lying when I say I got this old used dog. <laughs> there, there she is right there. So, anyways, here's the box. And I think you can see that they do still sell these. Um, they're very hard to find. As a matter of fact, uh, a buddy of mine gave me these. Uh, it came from his uncle, who's an old-time shooter. And who knows how long he's had these. There's actually uh, a few rounds of some other weird 22 in there. But these Super Calibris are a 20 grain tiny little projectile there on top and I believe that there's no powder in here it's just a primer I'm not exactly sure if I know they have a Calibri and a Super Calibri which these are the supers uh, which I think they go around like 580 feet per second brought out the chronograph so we'll test that but this is the older box um, you can still find these like I was saying and they're not super easy to find so I don't really see a lot of people shooting these. I guess they're more or less kind of a novelty than anything because, you know, nowadays we have something like the uh, CCI Quiets that go uh, 710 feet per second. Then there's the CCI Quiet Semi-Autos that go uh, 835 feet per second, I believe. Um, but we're going to test out these. Right now I've got a target set up at 25 yards. And let me go and load it up and we'll start with some accuracy testing. Because I'm just kind of curious to see just how accurate you can be with a 22 that doesn't actually have any uh, powder in it. It's just, I think it's being propelled simply by the primer. So let me go ahead and just load up five rounds here. That box is almost falling apart. Yeah, they're, they're very short. I wish I actually had a 22 short to compare it to. Because I bet they're about the same length. But Here, check it out. You can actually kind of see that 
it sits in the magazine with a lot of space left right here. Uh, so I don't know exactly if the brassing if the brass is um, shorter than a regular 22 long rifle, but the projectile itself definitely is. Matter of fact, let's go and compare it with these old 22s that were in here. So yeah, it looks like that the brass is actually the exact same size, but the projectile itself is um, much smaller. It's literally half the size. You know, regular 22 is 40 grain. This right here is 20. So let's just see how it does. I'm guessing it'll probably cycle okay in a bolt action. And I'm not going to be using hearing protection. I don't really think you need to. So let's see here. Yep, chambered just fine. All righty. Now, I haven't zeroed this rifle in a while. So we'll see what happens here. Okay. It makes a good ding. Ejects just fine. Rechambers just fine. I was aiming about mid upper torso. So it's shooting low for sure and slightly to the right. Again, um, not exactly sure if that's the, uh, you know, the scope not being zeroed well, but we're going to test that here in a second because I have some other 22s. So we'll see uh, just how zeroed the scope is. I swear, I could see the bullet bounce off the target. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, you could really see it bounce off the target. But <clears throat> right now I can tell that it's not very accurate. We're getting about a, at 25 yards, it's looking like about a five inch uh, group right now. I didn't chamber very well. That last shot there. Might have had an issue with the mag spring or something like that. Alright. Just try to manually put that in. But, yeah, you really don't need hearing protection. It is very quiet. Okay, so there are two flyers, but other than the two flyers, we've got about a two inch group over there. However, that's at 25 yards, so I don't really think I need to push it back any further. I'm going to go ahead and load up five more rounds and we'll see if we can get some better consistency as far as accuracy goes. This isn't really going to be a super long drawn out video or anything. Um, I'm probably just going to do 10 rounds of accuracy testing here. And we'll do like five rounds at the chronograph. And then uh, I want to do maybe five or so rounds with some penetration testing. I brought up some water jugs. So we'll see how that does. So it seems like it does chamber really well that last round. I think it got pushed up by the um, mag follower. Um, so let's see if it does it again with the last round. the last round. I think it chambered just fine. Alrighty. 
Yeah, not accurate. Not accurate at all. <laughs> but let's go and uh, take a look at the target real quick. Come on. Good boy. Did that gun scare you? I don't think so, right? Good boy. I think the gun scared him too much, so that's a good sign. All right. No way. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. It obviously hit on this side right here, but it made for a pretty cool little pattern um, on the back side. So, anyways, you all can see I was aiming right here, and uh, everything was hitting low. Um, you know, which I would expect, but it's there's no consistency as far as um, you know uh, uh, grouping goes. Because I think the first five shots, it was these three shots. I had one flyer here, one flyer down here. So I did have a pretty decent grouping uh, right here, but on that second five rounds, um, it was all right here. So I wouldn't exactly call this an accurate round or anything. I wonder if there's any more of these down on the on the ground anyways I'm gonna go back to 25 and uh, we'll load up some I think I got some federal automats so I just want to fire five shots of those and compare the um, the grouping obviously it's gonna be good grouping but I want to see where the scope is zeroed so so got some federal automats here and I went ahead and threw suppressor on the end of this just because uh, you know I don't want to be too loud for the little guy over there but I'm gonna just do five rounds. I do wanna just check out the accuracy here. So let's see where these are hitting. Way louder, even with the suppressor on. <laughs> Calibri's not accurate. Not accurate at all. Federal auto match, I got like a half inch group right there. So let's go check it out real quick. Uh, I want to check on the little guy too. Odie. Give him your bud. Give him a. <laughs> You're a frolicker. Give him your buddy. Good boy. Good boy. All right, so these are Calibri's right here, Super Calibri's. This is five shots of a uh, Federal Auto Match. So, <laughs> yeah, I think the scope was dead on actually. Um, so you can see that there's definitely no consistencies with those Super Calibri's. Um, so let me go ahead and just put a, uh, uh, sorry, can't do English. Uh, let me go ahead and bring out the chronograph. And I also want to do some uh, water jug penetration testing. All right, got some uh, clouds rolling in here, so hopefully it doesn't mess with the chronograph. I'm gonna do five rounds here. I believe I'm at, oh, I don't know, 10 feet, something like that. All right. 529. Five oh two. Five sixty six. Five forty three. Five sixty one. So 
definitely as advertised. I think 580 was what is advertised. Uh, I thought bringing out a 16 inch barrel would be a good idea. I maybe should have brought out an 18 inch barrel, something like the Rossi Real Bravo that I have, um, which is a lever action, which would probably, you know, operate pretty well with these Super Calibris. But I didn't really want to bring out anything larger than a 18 inch barrel. Um, I don't even know if I own anything larger than that. I think I, anyways, uh, the point being is that there is probably, you know, a point of diminishing returns when it comes to velocity out of a longer barrel with these. Um, so one thing though that I do want to uh, test out is I also brought out my Heritage Barkeep with the 2.6 inch barrel. So let me go and load, load that up with five rounds and uh, we'll see how fast that's going. But yeah, out of this uh, 16 inch barrel, looks like we're about an average of a uh, 540 ish something like that so i'll notate the average of course but um yeah it's, it's pretty much what's that what uh what is advertised so that's cool to see all right the heritage barkeep with a 2.6 inch barrel and the viridian uh, laser so uh also bird's head grip so we got five rounds loaded up and let's see how it does with a very tiny uh barrel as well as there's going to be a little bit of gas escaping in between the cylinder and the barrel so this should show us probably the bare minimum amount of velocity that you're going to get out of something like this i i'm per perplexed 588 feet per second i do not understand how that is it's definitely louder out of this but that doesn't make any sense to me. Anyways, let's see here. 584. 570. Uh, I don't think it read because it says 570. 596. Holy cow. Yeah, not, not the result I expected. All right, so uh, last but not least, let's do some penetration testing uh, with... They have some water jugs. Alrighty. I'm going to do both the rifle as well as the revolver. And we're going to start with this rifle. I am not expecting it to uh, go all the way through the first one, but just in case it does, I got a second jug right behind it of uh, some expired water before y'all get mad that I'm wasting water. Um, just like the last water jug test that I did. Uh, the place where I work um, recently had a water shortage and we went through our water supply and realized that it expired in 2018. That at this point is five years ago. So <laughs> stuff is probably not safe for human consumption. Anyways, let's see how it does. I'm gonna go for the bottom. Well, we went in. Oh my gosh, I think we did go through. I got water coming out of the second one. Is the bullet in there? I did not see a bullet. That means, yep, it's in there. <laughs> That's cool. So before I get that bullet out, I just want to show y'all. It actually did go through the first one and it punctured this. You can barely see. I mean, there's like a trickle of water coming out of there. But it basically just made a dent on the second one. So we'll save that one. Let's go and open this one up and take a look at the bullet. <laughs> uh, it's having a leak. It did not deform at all. Not sure if y'all be able to see this. When we go back inside, I'll do a close-up look. But it's a tiny little projectile. But there is no deformation deformation at all. There is a slight little, um, you know, flattening out of one side. 
but not exactly. Maybe that's that might have been where it hit the, you know, second uh, jug, but I'm not exactly sure. Cause I don't, it, I don't, I doubt it skimmed on the bottom. I'm pretty sure it didn't skim on the bottom and hit the wood or anything. So that little flattening there on one side, I think it's probably once it hit the water jug, it probably tumbled a bit, and uh, you know, hit the uh, second water jug enough to cause a very tiny little leak. I don't know if you guys can see. You can see little drops of water just barely coming out of there. So this stuff actually does penetrate pretty decently. You know, for going sub 600 feet per second. Well, let's go and take a look and see. Um, since this is going like 20 feet per second faster, ish maybe 30 feet per second faster than the rifle which again i'm not exactly sure why i've i've got a theory i'll discuss that a little bit later but um i'm expecting actually for this one to end up in the second jug so we'll see if i'm right where are we yep i was right <laughs> here's the second jug and we got a good hit, and I can see the bullet in there. So let me go ahead and open this one up. There it is. And just like the first one, there's no deformation at all. And this time, it's uh, it, did, it didn't even uh, flatten one side. Probably because it didn't just bounce off the second jug and went straight into the second jug. Again, just a theory. But, yeah, that's about it. I wanted to do one more penetration test, actually. Um, so this is just very soft plastic. I want to see what happens uh, if I can hit a paint can with it. And uh, I got an empty paint can because I don't want to shoot a full paint can. <laughs> All right. One more Calibri here, Super Calibri. Or, I think it should be the next one. Let's see if it can penetrate metal. Am I recording? Yeah, okay. It's <laughs> a problem with single actions, you gotta pull the hammer back. A little paint left in there but yep wow not only did it penetrate but it went all the way through so you got the uh the hit right there that was a really good hit and that's the exit so very surprising as a matter of fact all right so well, that's about it i'll go and bring you all back inside and we'll take a look at uh these super calibris a little up close and uh, yeah, so I'll see you all inside. Well, how y'all are? Welcome back. Uh, we're inside here taking a quick close look at these Aguila, 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 however you want to pronounce it. Super Calibri. It is a very tiny bullet with a little tiny point on top 20 grain no powder in the case but it is the same case of a uh, 22 long rifle so you can um seem seems like it functions just fine and uh you know at least these two firearms right here i'd love to test it in something like this a uh, lever action um i don't really want to do it with live ammo right now because i'm inside but something tells me that it might work so, first of all, let's just uh, discuss the elephant in the room, which is the fact that this barkeep right here was getting better velocity than this rifle. And I realized, oh yeah, it's because there's no powder in the case uh, to propel the projectile down the barrel. Duh. <laughs> so, as a matter of fact, um, I don't really think, it doesn't say it anywhere on here. As a matter of fact, this box is all in Spanish. It's the old style box. 
um, except for the fact it does say long rifle here, but like the fine print right here is all in Spanish. So I went into know any better, but um, apparently you're not supposed to fire this stuff down a uh, rifle that I would say is longer than 18 inches. This right here, a 16 inch rifle, I had no problem uh, achieving, you know, basically as advertised velocities. It was about 40 feet per second slower. Oh, by the way, actually 50 feet per second slower. I kept saying the advertised velocities, uh, 580, but it's actually 590 on their website. And that's about what this barkeep was getting. So I would say actually probably a 2.6 inch barrel like this barkeep is probably your optimal uh, bar barrel length and definitely not anything longer than 16 inches. I only have about seven of these bullets left and they are discontinued. I'm pretty sure of that. And you can't really find them anywhere online. Um, I did look at first glance. There's actually a bunch of listings that pop up, but they're all scam uh, websites when you looked into it. But all the major reputable websites uh, do not have these in stock. So reliability wise, um, it was just fine. It worked, you know, it cycled just fine in a revolver. Um, you know, every time the hammer dropped, it went bang. And then same thing with this rifle. The only issue was on that first set of five rounds, that last shot, you know, kind of got a, a little jam, but it was a quick fix. It was really no big deal. And then I didn't have any issues after that with Oh, I think around 20 rounds, something like that. Um, I, again, I really wish that I had more of these just to test, but I only had about 30 to start with, and I'm left with 27 here. Um, or, sorry, left with 7. So I used uh, 23. So there was probably, I'm guessing, about 15 in here and probably about 8 or so in here. And accuracy-wise, um, <laughs> these were not really good. Uh, for accuracy. I didn't really test out of the barkeep, but out of this rifle right here, it was getting very lousy accuracy. As you could see, it was about five to six inch groups um, at only 25 yards when with Federal Automats, this was doing about a half inch group. Um, it was shooting high because this is sighted in, I believe, at 50 yards. It might even be sighted in at 100. I forgot, but um, yeah, at 25, it was shooting high, but dead center. And uh, you know, with the barkeep, it would be fun to test the accuracy, but again, just limited on the amount of uh, ammo that I have. So I'd say the main competitors to these Super Calibris are probably the CCI Quiets, and this right here are uh, have both the 710 feet per second and then the semi-autos, which are 835. Um, the semi-auto, I just realized, is a 45 grain projectile, while the 710s are just 40s. Um, these right here are just 20s, <laughs> you know. but I will say that the Super Calibris right here are a lot quieter than even the CCI Quiet uh, 710s because, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure the 710s have at least a little bit of powder where these Super Calibris have no powder. So you're just, you're only hearing the uh, pop of the primer and it's definitely way below the sound barrier. Um, so you're not really hearing it, you know, travel through the air, I'm guessing, too much. But it's just incredibly quiet, as you guys could see from the shooting footage. So that's one big pro, I would say, of these Super Calibris over the uh, 710 CCI Quiets. And I'd say that, you know, obviously way quieter than these semi-autos. But I like to use these semi-autos um, sort of as like a subsonic round in the... Uh, you know, various, like, you know, an M&P 1522 with a suppressor, um, you know, it's very, very, very quiet. But I would still say that these Super Calibris are probably the quietest 22 I've ever shot. Um, suppressor or no, no suppressor. And obviously in this case, it was no suppressor. So that is a big pro for these uh, Super Calibris uh, over other quiet ammunition on the market. Uh, if you're trying to be as quiet as possible, say for... <laughs> Uh, backyard or indoor plinking. Uh, I mean, who hasn't popped off a few rounds in their basement? 
So like I said, unfortunately, uh, they do seem to be discontinued. And you can't really find them anywhere, um, even online. Maybe at like some local gun store you might get lucky, but I really wish that Aguila would uh, make these again because I still had a lot of fun with them. Um, it's just really fun to, you know, shoot an actual firearm with something that is incredibly quiet. And, you know, I wasn't really trying to go for accuracy or, or anything, but, you know, just for kind of fun plinking, I mean, something, you know, a, a kid could definitely enjoy, um, somebody who's new to shooting, something like that. I mean, this is a great introductory sort of round for somebody like that. Oh, and while you're at it, Aguila, uh, please, please, please bring back that Sniper Subsonic. Um, it's a 60 grain 22 long rifle, which just sounds awesome. And uh, I would really love to shoot it out of something like this right here. So that's about it. But before I end it, let's go ahead and just do a quick look here at this Mac that's just been sitting there all nice and quiet this whole video. Oy these leather holsters sometimes I swear but <laughs> it's got leather crap all over it <laughs> yeah anyways there she is it's a uh, Bulgarian it's one of those PMO1 uh, I think it's newer I think these were like the first Mac Robs made for like the civilian market from what I've read uh, made by Arsenal but imported by Global Ordinance. And by the way, this is a great example of how if you have to do an importation mark, do it as small as possible. I hate those importers that just like plaster their entire logo and everything right along the side of the slide or the frame or whatever and it just gunks up the whole thing. But this is this has a nice, simple, sleek look. Everything is matching too, which is really cool. You got the uh, serial number right there, that 2131. Same on the slide, 2131. And then, oh, yeah. I think I still have this loaded, by the way. It's not chambered, but this is what I was carrying. Um, however, the it does come with matching magazines, which is really cool too. See, it says 2131-1. dash because that is, um, what you would call it? <laughs> that is the first uh, magazine. And then I guess as your backup, you've got 2131-2. So it's just really cool how you get a little piece of history, even though if it's you know not a real military surplus and it's a, a civilian, you know, it's one made for the civilian market. It's just a really cool little chunk of steel that, you can pretty uh, easily use for something like self-defense. You know, two-legged animals as well as four-legged animals could uh, pounce on you at any minute. No, I'm just kidding. I I, no, I I just mostly carry it around just for peace of mind. Uh, I'm not really too worried about anything while I'm at the farm. So, yeah, I guess that's about it. I'm going to stop rambling because I've gone on way too long. Uh, it's probably the longest video on YouTube for this tiny little bullet. But... This thing was fun. I totally forgot to show you guys. Real quick. Just before we wrap up. So this. Come on focus. There we go. So this right here is the um, bullet that I found on the ground. After it hit steel. There was probably a lot of other bullets that were on the ground. But with the tall grass it was just hard to find. Um, but that's the flat side where it hit. And then it created this cool little pattern. Star like pattern uh, on the back and these are the bullets here that went into the jugs so it's just the tiny little thing let me get it to focus uh, again so yeah it's just a very tiny little bullet and like I said this one actually flattened out on one side you can see on the bottom there See how it's flat? And that's because I think when it hit the second milk, you know, when it hit the first one, it went in, started to tumble, and then it hit the second milk jug with, I believe, that side right there, that flat side. Just kind of flattened out a bit because this other one right here, 
is completely round. There we go. But yeah, see, this one right here is completely circular. Anyways, that's it. I'm going to wrap it up. If you can find these, by all means, snatch up as much as you can because they're a lot of fun. And then you could probably sell them, you know, if you don't use them, you could sell it on the secondary market for a boatload of money because, um, you know, I think I saw them for like five, six bucks a box like this, but uh, I would gladly pay like $10 just to get at least a box or two. So that's about it. I will see y'all in the next one. Thanks for watching.